Hi everyone, my name is Anton and today we will talk about how do Jekyll layouts work. In previous video we have installed Jekyll, set up our project and looked at the default files as well as made a few changes. In this video we will mainly focus on what we have inside our includes and layouts folders by connecting our project to Twitter Bootstrap. Before we dive in, let's type Jekyll serve in the terminal to make our site accessible in the browser. To understand how we are going to achieve this, let's take a look at what the default layouts offer us. Inside of the default HTML layout, we can see that Jekyll uses Liquid to request the content from other files. This layout generates the foundation elements of every page. As you can notice, Jekyll uses Liquid templating language to process templates. Here you can see the liquid include tag that grabs the content of head.html and inserts it in the place of itself. The page layout works the same way, but we can see that it doesn't have head, header or footer as the default layout. The reason for that is that we have stated the layout in a YAML setting on top of the page. Jekyll doesn't have a problem with it and will insert the content of this layout inside of the content in the default layout. And the main content will go inside of this article tag. This might sound slightly complicated, so let's see a simplified version without the layout inception. Let's copy the content of the default layout and save it as test.html. Now we can take the content of page.html layout purposely and leave behind the YAML setting and replace the content in our new test.html layout with it. This will behave the same way as the page layout. And you are free to make your layouts in this way. But this amount of repeating yourself does not satisfy us, so we will go with the layout inception. If we take a look at the post layout, it uses the inception principle again. But it also wants to include things like date, post, author and mad data, which we obviously do not have inside the includes folder. Why is that? The answer is fairly simple. This information can be unique to each blog post and is stored in the YAML settings section. The default post does not have an author, so Jekyll will ignore it. But if we will add an author name and refresh our browser, we can see that Bob's name is now displaying next to the date. Thanks, Bob. You make us very happy. As now we have a basic understanding of how Jekyll performs with its layouts and includes, let's try to include Bootstrap in our project. First, let's copy the bootstrap files. If you are unfamiliar how to set up your project with bootstrap, let's take a look at what bootstrap folks have on their website to help in basic template section. We can split the bootstrap stuff into chunks. The first goes in the head and this one goes in the body tag. We can see that Twitter requires us to include these three meta tags inside and on top of our head tag, which our default layout completely satisfies. Let's insert these to our head section and locate it above our already existing CSS, so we could override certain rules if we will need to. As we can see, we also need to include jQuery and the JS file at the end of the body tag. How do we do this? We are going to create our own include file. Let's call it scripts.html. And this is where we will put our bootstrap JS, jQuery and other scripts such as Google Analytics. Now let's include our creation default layout. And as we will save the file, Jekyll will regenerate the pages. If we open inspector, we can see that the bootstrap scripts and CSS files are in the DOM of our page. As we look at our website, we won't notice any difference, as the template is still using the default CSS default classes. Let's give it a little tune. Let's comment out the link to the default CSS, and we will see that the website looks like a disaster. In order to fix it, let's throw some bootstrap classes on our includes files. Let's start with the header and use bootstrap's example of navigation bar. We can write the name of our studio here, but let's replace it with the liquid statement from the old header. This way, if we ever will need to edit any information, all we have to do is to edit the config YAML file. We won't need most of it, so let's strip it down and only use simple buttons on the right. We are not going to complicate just yet, and let's get rid of the dropdown as well. Now let's make Jekyll generate the menu for us by reusing the liquid statement from the previous menu and wrap the tag A with the tag Li, as Bootstrap requires. Let's check out our menu and realize that I forgot to insert a slash in front of CSS in the link inside of the header include file. Now we have a responsive bootstrap header. We can see that our menu is generated and works the way we wanted it to. But our home button is out of order. This is because we did not edit the link address in the header include file. Let's replace the hash sign with a slash. 
so our home button will always bring us to the home page. Let's do the same job for the footer. This is what the current footer looks like. Let's start ours by putting a horizontal roll there and place our footer underneath. Inside we will have a container with two rows. In the first row we will have two columns, one with a list of links and another one with site description. The first column will have offset by two with an unstyled list of three links. They will be Twitter, GitHub and email. We can put the email and usernames by copying the liquid tags from old footer. Then let's say writes reserved in the second row and see what we have so far. Now let's add the justified description in the second column in the first row. And see that I have misspelled center in the tag of our rights. Actually, let's wrap the rights in the paragraph tag and correct the spelling of the class. Now our four is done. Now it's time to do the same for the content and post layouts. In default.html we only need to change classes to container and row. In page.html let's change article class to text justify to make it look more appealing to the eye. In post.html let's throw text justify on the article tag and strip down other classes. Also, let's get rid of a double heading on a blog post page. Now we have a website that's been generated with jQL and styled with Bootstrap. Also now we know how to work with Liquid and jQL and how we can edit or create our own templates. We can use our new skills to create custom content and if you find yourself in a situation where you need to create a couple of pages with custom structure, now you know how to create a new layout for this task. In the next video I want to talk about creating new posts process and the file formats. If you have any questions or suggestions for this or my future videos, please leave a comment below. My name is Anton and see you next time.